Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Well, first of all, thank you for coming on and doing this with me. You bet. This is going to be fun. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. (laughs) So I thought, Marlene, I thought it would be really cool to start out with your corporate journey Mm. and to kind of go through and talk about how you eventually hit six figures, right? Because it was, there was a little bit of movement. And so let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah. I love, oh my gosh, being able to share this journey. And I hope that I can inspire some women to um, pursue their dream and despite obstacles that are thrown in the way. Um, my journey really started in corporate America at the Clorox company um, at the worldwide headquarters in downtown Oakland, California. Prior to that, I had had some office jobs and administrative type things, which really qualified me to go into that role. Um, and I was hired in the corporate communications and public relations department as the executive assistant to the vice president of that department. Um, I did not have a college degree at that time. I had been um, in some night classes trying to make my way on that journey of getting my college degree. But I was sort of identified by an HR person, um, somebody who kind of became an advocate for me to help me level up inside the organization, who saw me as somebody with some potential. And then when a position came available on the Hidden Valley and Casey Masterpiece brand, she sort of tapped me on the shoulder and said, I want you to apply for this job. I think you'd be great for the role. So that being a really key element right, in your career advancement is finding advocates inside of the organization who believe in you, who know your capabilities, and can help advance your career. Mm-hmm. So I applied for the job got it, Um, had a couple of different rotating roles inside of that brand, everything from um, sales to production and planning to marketing. So really learned the entire brand and how it went to market both in the um, consumer industry, so the grocery retail, as well as the industrial commercial, so selling to restaurants Mm -hmm. in the larger volume stuff. Um, But again, I didn't have my college degree, and at Clorox at that time, it was a requirement. If I wanted to advance beyond this coordinator level that I was at, I had to have the degree. I had to check the box, and I had to have sales experience, which I didn't have. Um, So... I made a hard decision, and hard because they were reimbursing me for my college education, right? So I was on this tuition reimbursement program, and they were helping fund my way through school. But I knew that I needed to leave the company for a couple of reasons. One was I needed to get that outside sales experience. If I was going to level up my career to the point that I wanted it to go, I had to get that foundational experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And I knew that with those incremental pay increases that you get in corporate America, you get like 2% or 5%, right? <laughs> if you perform really, really well, you get 7%. Um, it's it's a small increment. And if I ever wanted to break through that ceiling of six figures that I knew I could get to, um, I had to leave and then re-enter at a higher level. Mm-hmm. So I decided to sort of take a bit of a demotion and pay cut and go into a field sales job where I knew the commissions could pay, right? Like there was this base salary plus commissions and I started hitting the pavement hard. Um, And I went into like literally hardcore sales role. I had to call on 30 companies a day, cold call, knock on the door, hi, this is who I am and this is what I sell and can I get your business card and do you buy these things? And um, that was fun and it was in San Francisco. So I got to learn the city really, really well. Um, and that landed me in a sales director job because one of the companies I was calling on, I was selling custom packaging for the consumer packaged goods industry, things like Mrs. Fields cookies. They come in those really pretty Mm -hmm. boxes. 
my company produced and designed those boxes, right? So I was like the conduit for packaging for consumer products. Mm -hmm. Um, And then this company called Haragami, it was a hair accessory company, liked my style, liked my approach, and offered me a job to come in as their sales director and to be their face of QVC. So I got to go and sell hair accessories on QVC, taking phone calls live, right? Like grandma's calling in at (laughs) two in the morning. I just bought these for my granddaughter. And I'm like, oh, which did you get? Did you get the spring reeds or the part pizzazz or the hair gummy? And I've got these models in front of me and I'm doing their hair while talking on camera and selling and then doing my own hair, right? Um, So all of it is just experience, right? It's just adding to that toolbox. It's it's interesting though that you had enough faith in yourself to really take a step back in order to be able to move forward. Because I think that there's probably a lot of, especially younger women that are listening, that given that same situation would really, really hesitate or stay with what's safe. Mm. So why do you think, why do you think you did it? What, what do you think? Do you think you're just wired that way? Or was it, was, did you have a mentor or was there someone that really kind of nudged you? Mm. I didn't have a mentor. I think my dreams were bigger than my fear, right? I think that there's always going to be some unknown. There's always going to be the what if. What if I fail? What if I don't achieve you know, the amount of money that I need to make each month to cover my expenses? Mm-hmm. What if I make a fool of myself? What if I leave this really, really great secure job for the unknown and it ends up crumbling? There's always gonna be that unknown. Mm-hmm. But my dreams have always been bigger than my fear. And I think there's a faith component in that, right? Like knowing who I am, knowing what I'm called to do with my life, knowing that I, I have always been a little bit fearless. Like I don't quite know when to be afraid. And so I kind of just go for it. So maybe there's a little bit of that, that it's just innately me. Um, But when my dreams are so big and I know that there's so much more, I'm more willing to take the risk. Like I know I can do this thing. Yeah. That's a good lead in to kind of where you are now because (laughs) you left a very secure, very, very well paying position. Dead. To dive out into the entrepreneurial what realm, really. I did. And, I mean, in a big way. And then COVID kind of leveled you. Is that okay for me to say that? I feel yeah. bad saying that. No, but it's, it's really okay. True. It really is. Um, you know, when it happened, it hurt. It hurt really bad. And it took me a little while to get my feet back under me and to find my balance again. But now in retrospect, I can see the blessing that it's been. I can see how much I learned. And now it's just propelled me forward um, because I was brave enough and bold enough to step Mm -hmm. out and follow my dreams. Um, I now have even more confidence that I am going to be able to overcome anything and it's opening doors. The work I did in my entrepreneurial business has opened doors for me now in this new role that I've taken on. Um, I left a very high paying job in California. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful career at an amazing company. I worked my way up the ranks for eight years inside that organization. Um, I earned respect. I was listened to in the boardroom. Um, I was I was looked upon as a future leader in that organization. Mm -hmm. Um, But we had to make a move. So that was part of the impetus, right, for my choice. Um, We left California to come to Idaho for my husband's career. And I could have relocated potentially with my current company or find found a role here locally. Mm -hmm. But I was ready. I was ready to branch out on my own and to do that thing that I knew I was being called to do with my life. Like, you know how you have that little stir. that little nudge? Yeah, mm-hmm. that little yeah. stir inside you that says, I think that I'm made to do this or I think yeah. I could be really good at that. Yeah. Um, I did have a secure foundation because I did have a husband with a paying job and a good career and all of that at mm-hmm. the time. Um, so it sort of helped fuel that. There was a little bit of security in there, mm-hmm. but then the marriage ended mm-hmm. and that security went away. But my dream didn't and my passion didn't. So I made a really hard choice to invest in me and to take 
all of the financial resources that I had access to and pour it into the business that I had the dream to create. So mm -hmm. while the stability went away and the marriage went away, the dream became my, my ultimate reality. Yeah pursuing that. It's so interesting. There's a couple of things in that for me. I think the the first one is that I believe that there are a lot of women out there that have that fire to do something else and they pull themselves back and they pull themselves back. And when you watch someone, male or female, but mainly for me, it's women. When you watch them move forward in it, there's this, there's a difference in the way they are as people. Like mm. you see the light in your eyes when you talk about it. And I'm guessing that that probably would not have been the same about talking about your corporate career. Definitely, you're right. Yeah. You're definitely right. And even though it didn't go exactly the way you wanted it to, it seems like you're on this other course that is the right course. Right? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I think that when we live into our passions, when we acknowledge our capabilities and when we believe in ourselves and we truly know who we are and what we're capable of doing, that sometimes the twists and turns in the road might feel awkward in the moment, but they're ultimately still going towards a similar destination or it's the same journey, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you're, you're getting different lessons along the way that, that take you out of your comfort zone and force you to grow and learn. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, you're always better for it. Yeah. When you stay the course, when you stay with what you know you're capable of doing and what you desire to do with your life, yeah. All of the twists and turns end up making you stronger and better. You know, one of my previous guests said it this way, and I thought I'd never heard it this way, and it was so powerful to me. She said, at the time, it looked like an enormous boulder in my way, and now I look back and realize it was a pothole that I needed to navigate. Mm. And I thought, that's really, really powerful visual because... Yeah. It's so true when you look back. <laughs> right. Hindsight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's always so but much when more you're clear. in it, not as much. No, it feels crushing. It, it, yeah. it Like takes, that boulder is just landing on you. Yep, it just smashed me. It just destroyed everything I had, everything I thought I could be. Um, but yeah, in, in hindsight, I realized I had, there was a lesson. There were lessons I had to learn. Mm -hmm. There was stuff I needed to know that I wouldn't have known if I hadn't lost it all. If I if COVID hadn't shut me down, I would still be moving forward in that direction, but not having learned the lessons that I needed to learn by having been shut down. Yeah, it's so powerful. So I want to circle back to the very beginning and something that probably... Um, lot of people don't know about you, which is that you didn't graduate high school. No, I didn't. I was a high school dropout. Um, and it's, it's funny. I think this is that whole fear thing. Like I'm a little bit too fearless. Like maybe I don't know when to be afraid, <laughs> but, um, I didn't, I didn't ever fit well in, in any peer group in high school. Um, the way my parents sort of managed my life was I went to a different school every single year of my life. Oh. I never ever had two years in a row at a school. So I was always that new kid, always trying to like mm -hmm. plug myself in and figure out how to connect and how to make friends. Um, and so I had a bigger desire to earn my own money to buy the kinds of clothes I wanted than I did to have to fit in school and graduate and do the traditional thing. Mm -hmm. So I kind of told my parents, I was like, hey, I found this school where you can go one day a week for an hour and then they give you a bunch of homework and I can have a job and I can work full time and I can earn my own money and you guys don't have to buy me clothes anymore. And they're like, fine go ahead. So I dropped out of high school. I enrolled in this other I can, you can't even really call it school. Like, <laughs> basically, I showed up and I'd show the guy my pay stub, and he's like, "Oh, okay, that's enough." And he would sort of sign off on the fact that I went to school that week because I actually oh went to gosh. work that week. Um, so when I was 21, I realized that I would never make more than 15 bucks an hour if I didn't get that college degree. Mm -hmm. So I went to the local junior college and took the entrance exam and 
failed miserably. Got a phone call from the advisor who told me I had a seventh grade reading level and a ninth grade math level. And so they told me I had to retake all of my high school math and English, and then to come back and retest to see if I could get accepted into junior college. Um, and I was so driven, I was like, okay, fine. I was working full time, I was cocktail waitressing at night, and then in between I was taking retaking all of my high school math and English in this self-paced study. Um, took me about a year. And then I went back and I took the exam and I qualified for junior college and got in. <laughs> um, and it was a 10 year journey to graduate from college. I always worked full time. I often had two jobs, but I graduated magna cum laude with my degree in business administration and a minor in theology. And I'm very proud of that because I feel like the work I did in college, I was able to take and apply in my office mm -hmm. life the very next day, mm -hmm. my business life. So whatever yeah. concepts, macroeconomics, microeconomics, finance, accounting, management, leadership, whatever it was, I would take that back to work the next day and put it into practice. Yeah. Um, so I feel like my college education was very, um, very fruitful for me, more so than people who go like right out of college, mm -hmm. because not everybody is made to go to college right out of high school. Mm -hmm. Clearly not me. Being a high school dropout, I couldn't even qualify. <laughs> but look at where you are now. I mean, it's really grit. You've got a lot of determination <laughs> and grit. I feel like that's a really good description, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so, <laughs> yeah. So one of the questions that I always ask women is, number one, when you did hit six figures, how did that feel for you emotionally? Oh what was that? That had to have been a huge. Oh my gosh, it was so huge. I, I remember I remember the day I got the pay increase. I remember the day I got my performance evaluation and I was told the percentage pay increase that I was going to get. And I knew that that was going to put me right over the tipping, tipping point. I think I was making $98,000 a year. And that pay increase put me to like 102. Mm -hmm. I was so ecstatic. It, it was it was a milestone for me. I mm -hmm. felt like I had broken through a ceiling. I had a uh, one and a half year old at home, so my son was, you know, very tiny. I was commuting this ridiculous commute across the Bay Bridge every day from Oakland into San Francisco. I was training for a half marathon at that point. Like life was nuts, and I was working so so hard, and it felt worth it. It was like I had. I had done that thing I knew I was capable of doing mm -hmm. and sky's the limit from here. I felt almost invincible once I crossed that threshold and it did keep going up from there and the bonuses kept going mm -hmm. up. So not just that base salary. So once you hit a threshold, your bonus structure changes in a lot of uh, positions in corporate America. Um, and it tipped me close to 150,000 a year by the time I left corporate America, which felt very um, good and self-sufficient and like, I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of times in my life and a long time in my life where I didn't believe I could take care of myself. I didn't believe that I could do it without a significant other or a partner. Um, but something about having that staying power of running your own mm -hmm. um, six-figure income is, is empowering. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, your story is really, your journey has to be very inspiring to a lot of people that actually get to hear it. So I'm glad that more people are going to get to hear it here. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the I hope it takes a few women that are maybe in one of those places and shows them, yeah, you can, like you really can. So, so book or podcast. I know you do a lot of both, but give me one. <laughs> oh, my favorite. Um, so... It's going to sound religious, but it's not. Okay. It's called Conversations with God. Okay. And it's this, it's a spiritual book that will profoundly change how you view um, religion and spirituality for yourself and how each one of us is connected to our divine creator, our source, mm -hmm. and we are truly empowered and powerful to create the life that we desire and that we believe that we um, can have. Um, and that book, I've listened, so there's three, three in the series. Mm -hmm. I've listened to the first one three times, the second one, or the third one twice, the second one only once. Um, 
And it's like every time I listen to it, I get more nuggets of, of wisdom. Yeah, that I truly am the creator of my destiny and um, am a powerful force to do great things in this world. That's awesome. So what have I not asked you? Is there, so we have kind of two sets of listeners, right? We have those aspiring to six figures and we have women that would be more parallel you to you that are somewhere in the six figure and higher range that are probably listening because it's their peer group, yeah. right? Anything that I haven't asked that you think would be impactful? Yeah, and I'm not super sure how to frame it up, but it, it's it's along the lines of um, choosing the people that you surround yourself with, okay? So that's sort of like the, the impetus of, of the discussion here. Sometimes people who we have chosen to bring into our lives can limit our beliefs about ourselves. They can hinder us or hold us back. Um, they can make us feel obligated to things that um, don't allow us to live into our greatest potential. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those are friends, sometimes they're family, sometimes they're spouses, sometimes they're people in your community or your congregation. I would encourage every person, man or woman, to really consider the relationships, the core relationships in their lives mm -hmm. and evaluate whether or not those individuals are inspiring them to be the best version of themselves. And if they are not, consider establishing some boundaries around those individuals who might not be letting you live into your greatest potential. Mm -hmm. um, I have had two husbands. Um, I have learned a lot from my marriages, but neither of those marriages allowed me to pursue the greatest version of myself. Mm -hmm. And while any ending relationship is sad um, and is a loss and is a death in itself, sometimes our contracts that we have with other humans expire so that we can move on and become the great light that we are meant to be. So I just wanna encourage people that it sometimes is okay to say enough or goodbye mm -hmm. so that we can let the world benefit from what it is we have to share. It's interesting that you say that. One of my favorite books that I recommend to a lot of, especially women, it seems like is, it's called Boundaries actually. I read it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, it is. And even with, you know, our parents mm -hmm. and sometimes our moms, you know, or our sisters, mm -hmm. they knew us when, they knew us when, mm -hmm. and they still define us as yeah. when, not today. Mm -hmm. um, and that can hold us back when we see ourselves through their eyes. And so having healthy boundaries on all of our relationships it's makes us better. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for this. Thank yeah. you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you for being so open and honest. I know that's who you are as a person, <laughs> but it's really, I think you're going to inspire a lot of women. So thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you for following your dream and your passion to share these stories with an audience and your community. I think it's a really great thing that you're doing with your time and your energy and your love. So thank you for living into your calling. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.